Can you imagine it? To photograph the Milky Way and the Golden Light with vast red landscapes, slot canyons, strange rock formations, epic arches and the iconic hoodoos? Well, this is what we try to accomplish in our 3000 miles Photobills expedition to the American Southwest. Hello, Photopiller, Rafael the Bar here. This story begins with Mini Me, or Mini Rafa, or the Mini Bart, I may say. A cool present that Pia, Honora, and Nee gave me in the first day of the expedition. Present that, don't ask me why, ended into one of the dry beans at the breakfast room of our beautiful Best Western's Red Hill Hotel in Kanab, Utah. So I ended into a bigger trash bin looking for it. And after opening all the trash bags and playing with all the disposals for quite a long time, thanks God I ended by finding it. A happy ending for Mini Rafa and for me. Wow! Do you see how fun the Photopills expeditions are? If you wish to join one, make sure to subscribe to our newsletter. It's where we announce and sell all the expeditions and the camp. I'm going to leave a link to the newsletter in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Check it out! It all began in White Pocket. Where are we going, David? We are going to White Pocket. Nice. And we're going to be spending the night shooting some stars. Getting in hopefully an epic sunrise. <laughs> be a lot of fun. Yeah. This is David Swindler, our brilliant Photopills master here in Canab and owner of Action for Tours. Great guy, great teacher, amazing photographer. So after lots of coffee, a short briefing session, Ruby, Paul, Alan, Ni, Honora, Pia, Peter, Carol, Alper, and Michael, the 10 brave Photopillers, plus David and myself we hit the road towards White Pocket. It takes a bit more than two hours to get to White Pocket from Canada. Not an easy place to reach, you need a 4x4 vehicle to get through the deep sandy road. Once there, we set up the camp with the help of our camp master Wendy Lemoris and went to explore White Pocket before sunset. The rock formations here are just stunning. The contrast between the coral colored rocks that resemble a cauliflower or even a break, I may say, and the red rocks is a dream come true for any photographer. Also, there is a lonely tree right in the middle of the white rocks. It's a perfect spot for Milky Way photography. So, I used photo pills to plan a few cool Milky Way shots. First, a diagonal of the Milky Way with the tree for March 28th, and the second, a vertical Milky Way with the tree for August 27th, which is a super cool shot. Then we spent the afternoon photographing the rock formations in Golden Hour as the sun was going down and down till it hid behind the beautiful rock formations. White Pocket at sunset is stunning, amazing colors, amazing shapes. And after sunset, dinner time, bedtime and Milky Way time. Despite of having a few clouds right on the Milky Way core, we spent a couple of hours photographing the Milky Way with the lonely tree under the super dark sky of white pocket. Amazing! Tostul Hudus is only 40 minutes away from Canaan. You park the car and then hike 20 minutes to find the Hudus. What's a Hudu? Well, it's a spire-like feature with a boulder perch atop a pedestal rock, like a mushroom or a toadstool. They form when a softer rock erodes away, leaving a column sheltered from the elements. It was pretty cloudy when we got there, but we saw an opening at the horizon that gave us hope. The sun might break through the cloud layer and lit the hoodoos with its golden light. And it happened. Suddenly, we were surrounded by golden light. The hoodoos were beautifully lit, showing their shapes and vibrant colors. But the hoodoos are not the only cool subjects you find here. There are Komodo dragons too. Well, the dangerous dragon <laughs> resulted to be just a bunch of rocks perfectly placed. Jokes apart, there are tons of cool different compositions here. I particularly like this one, with the reds at the bottom and the whites at the peak. And of course, I also planned a cool Milky Way shot with this rock formation. 
And of course, I also planned a Milky Way shot with the Toadstool Hoodoo too. But because of the clouds, we had to come back another day to catch these shots. Which, of course, we did, and it was amazing. First, we photographed the Milky Way with the Toadstool Hoodoo, and then we went to photograph it with the white and red rock formations. Super cool! After a cool class on how to create Milky Way panoramas, we love teaching photo pills and photography in our expeditions, and after checking the weather forecast, we decided to go to Stud Horse Point, which is one hour away from Canaan. We were literally heading into a storm. We could feel the lightning striking in the distance. The views up there at Stud Horse Point are incredible. So we got out of the cars and went to explore the area. Here you find interesting subjects all over the place, including many short and tall hoodoos. And if you wish to use a telephone lens, you also find spectacular subjects in the distance. We enjoyed photographing the moody landscapes, but we didn't see the sun that much at sunset. So we decided to come back at sunrise. And the sun rose as planned next to the main rock formation. Stunning, stunning sunrise. Stud Horse Point, I strongly recommend you to visit this spot. It's incredible. Inchworm Arch is located at 46 minutes from Canaan. It's not far away, but you'll have to drive through deep sand roads to get there. The hike it takes just 10-15 minutes to complete. And the arch is tall and beautiful. It really looks like an inchworm crawling down the hill. Here we have fun playing a bit with the arch as we waited for the sun to set behind it. So we could photograph the golden sunset light bouncing inside the arch. Also, we could have stayed to photograph a cool diagonal of the Milky Way here, but we decided to go to a second arch, the secret arch. This arch is located in private land, so they got permission to photograph it. And although it was a super cloudy night, the clouds were moving in the right direction, so we set up everything, and we enjoyed shooting long exposures of the beautiful arch with the moving clouds. Our next stop in our adventure was a really cool Slot Canyon. You find the Picaboo Slot Canyon at a 23 minutes drive from Canaan. And the cool thing is that the entrance to the Slot Canyon is just 2 minutes away from the parking area. The Slot Canyon is a narrow and deep gorge formed from water rushing through sandstone or other layered sedimentary deposits. It's a fantastic place to take photos in the middle of the day. After the photo build class this morning, we decided to come down and visit the Slot Canyon. Pretty amazing place to take photos at this time of the day because uh, the sun is high in the sky and the sun rays uh, bounce on the walls, creating all these cool different changes in tonality depending on the world that's lit and the world that uh, is not lit. We spent a few hours here looking for compositions. Beautiful place. So we explored and explored the canyon and we took photos, lots of photos, till we reached the end of the canyon and we had to go back. A fantastic place, 100% recommended. It's 1.39 am Milky Way time in Bryce Canyon. Bryce is not far away from Canap, it's just at a 1 hour and 25 minutes drive. Photographing the Milky Way, it's real. <laughs> It's real! Coffee time! After a short walk from the parking area, we got to the shooting spot. Here we are at Bryce Canyon, finally. After I don't know how many days in this expedition, we got clear skies. Wow! You can't believe how many stars I'm seeing right now. Just amazing. We're getting for our Milky Way shot here. I'm getting so excited about it. It was too dark to see what was in front of us. But check the Milky Way shots we got. To get them, we use the low-level lighting technique to lead the photograph. And this is Bryce at sunrise. The whole landscape is filled by hoodoos. Hundreds and hundreds of pinnacles under the golden morning light. What an incredible show to witness and photograph. Happy to be alive. And from Bryce Canyon to Devil's Garden in Escalante. But before, we stopped at our hotel in Escalante, where David showed us how to process, how to post-process the Milky Way shot we took at Bryce. So cool! Devil's Garden is a great spot to photograph sunsets, sunrises and the Milky Way. 
the place is packed with stunning rock formations, including a beautiful beautiful arch where we photograph the minia, and also the four nuns, a really great place to plan and photograph the Milky Way. Let's have a look at the plan. Yeah, as you see, the Milky Way perfectly aligns with the nuns. Well, after a few shots of the nuns and a quick dinner on the rocks, I'm here with Alper, enjoying our Subway, amazing sandwich with everything in it. <laughs> Jalapenos, onion, I don't know how many kinds of meats. I don't know, maybe five? <laughs> yeah. You said everything. Yeah, everything. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah. Bon appetit. We came back at night to photograph the Milky Way with the four nuns. We set up everything at the plant shooting spot, and this is the cool Milky Way shot we got. A cool diagonal of the Milky Way with the four nuns. Ah, and we also stayed to photograph the blue hour with three pillars we love. Our next and final destination was Alstrom Point, a great lookout over Lake Powell, located at a bit more than two hours from Canada. To get there you have to literally drive on rocks using the four-wheel low drive mode. The view up there is just beautiful. It's a great location to use your telephone lens too. And we finally made it to Alstrom Point. What a rough road to get here, almost two hours and a half driving. And here we are, scouting for our Milky Way shot tonight. Well, I don't know if we're gonna make it uh, to clouds, but and also for the strong wind, if the wind remains like this, it's gonna be tough to have our tripod stabilized. But we're gonna try, we'll see. We'll see. Let me show you the Milky Way panel we can take here tonight in Astron Point. And this was our Milky Way plan for the night, weather permitting. The Milky Way was describing a beautiful arch over Alstrom Point. As you see here through the meteorology view of photo pills, it's a really cool Milky Way shot. This is something similar to what David got in this image that hangs from one of the walls of the Wild Time Cafe in Canada. By the way, a great place to eat. Unfortunately, weather was not on our side, too cloudy for the Milky Way. So that evening we shot the golden hour and the blue hour with the magnificent views. Ah, and Alper Taki got a really nice close-up shot of the super thin moon. Very, very cool. Don't get me wrong, we did try to get the Milky Way, but there were just far too many clouds in the sky. We camped at night at Alstrom Point. The photo pillars in tents and David and I in one of the cars. We woke up to photograph sunrise. We enjoyed the dramatic views and the dramatic light. It was really a super, super morning. After sunrise, we packed everything, jumped into our cars and drove back to Canab. Ah, Canab, home sweet home. It was time to enjoy our final super dinner at the Wild Time Cafe and to learn a bit about the local capture from a real cowboy. So many western films were made here. Did you know that John Wayne had his own room with his own bed here? Amazing. Those guys really made this area famous. Um, John Wayne did a lot of movies here, and the Perry Lodge was where everybody stayed. Well, in the 1950s, John Wayne made a comment, it's too damn hot in Canab not to have a place to cool off. So he offered to pay for half of the cost of putting in the very first swimming pool in Canab, and that is the existing pool at Perry Lodge. So John Wayne paid for that. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, the little thing, it's been a few years back, but there was a high school kid working for Perry Lodge and they told him to go out to this room that was being used as storage and take everything out of it and take it to the dump. We want to make it a rentable room. So that kid went out there and started pulling everything out of the room and he fell upon this bed. It was a foot and a half longer and a foot and a half wider than the California King. It was huge, had special blankets, had the whole nine yards. And so he went to the owners and he said, what's the deal with this big bed? And they're like, oh, yeah, we forgot that was in there. Yeah, John Wayne had that special order and shipped here to Perry Lodge. And we would get it out and put it in his room when he stayed here. And then we'd put it in storage when he wasn't here. And he's like, so you want to keep that? I said, no, get rid of it. So this kid was smart enough to say, well, can I have 
I had that. But we don't care, it just needs to go away. So the high school kid ended up with John Wayne's bed. <laughs> <laughs> so every once in a while, somebody will ask me if I'll sell it. Oh. <laughs> I was 16 years old when I, when I got John Wayne's bed. <laughs> and this is the end of the story. A story on how a few brave photo pillars went up and down the American Southwest to shoot land daddy photos. Now, again, if you wish to join one of our expeditions, I recommend you to join our newsletter. It's the place where we announce them and sell the spots. I'm gonna leave a link to the newsletter in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Check it out! Also, if you wish to improve your photography, I recommend you to read and download our super detailed photography guides. You'll find the link to the guides in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Download them! As always, if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember, if you have power to imagine, plan and shoot legendary photos. Bye!